All right, this is the last uh, video I'm going to make showing the new transient generator. We'll try some stuff out on it, and hopefully you'll have an idea of what I can and can't do with it. Before we get started, I thought I would uh, cover a couple other topics. If you follow my videos, you knew I did a big benchmark on several handheld meters that cost about $50. I got a lot of feedback from running those tests, and there's a few comments that I see repeated over and over again that I thought I should address in this video. You know, people were curious about the generators. Hopefully I've uh, answered some of that by showing how the generator was built. One of the comments that you see posted frequently is that the meters didn't actually cause a hazardous condition during my testing and therefore the meters are safe. And you'll see different derivatives of that. People say it didn't blow up or it didn't catch fire. All the same kind of thing. Basically the meter didn't put you in harm's way during my testing and therefore it's really not an unsafe meter. Now again, I tried to explain that I never was concerned about how safe these meters were and were not. So I thought I would just try to explain this a little bit further because obviously some of you are still confused by that. Another thing we see is uh, people say that I'm trying to show meter safety. That's the farthest thing from anything I've attempted to show. Uh, this testing has never been about meter safety. It's always been about meter front end robustness. Some of you may infer that the more robust a meter is, it could be more safe. You know, I really don't know that. I don't think we can prove that from this testing. Again, I've said it before, if you want to know if a meter is safe by what you think is safe and you want to pay to have it certified by an accredited lab, that's what you need to do or you need to buy a meter that's been tested by an accredited lab. That's how you're going to know if it's safe. Nothing that I've shown is going to have anything to do with meter safety. So again, any of the up and coming testing that I plan on doing, it's not going to be about meter safety. When I start talking about the generator, I would show these waveforms and it basically looks something like this and I would say I'm running at a certain voltage and it has a certain width and I explain it that way and I'd say I have a certain source impedance. So I gave you the numbers for these and I had explained that originally I started out working at less than one joule and when I worked my way up to the finals I was running somewhere around 10 joules. You know so I made it all the way to the end of the testing with about 10 joules of energy. Okay, I'm not so sure that that's probably not part of the problem is people don't understand what a joule is. I try to explain energy and people think energy is power maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what the confusion is there, but uh, it does sound like people have a misunderstanding about what a joule is. So I thought I'd like to just take a couple of minutes and go through the basics of energy. So a joule is equal to the amount of work that you've actually accomplished over a certain amount of time. Okay, If I have a capacitor and I'm discharging that into a circuit, I have a finite amount of energy available. Okay, So a joule is equal to one watt over one second. Okay, If I have a generator that's made up of a battery, for example, and I charge up a capacitor, and I have a switch and I put that out to a meter and I charge this capacitor all the way up and then once it's charged I discharge it that amount of energy that's available to that meter is equal to one half CV squared okay so it's a pretty straightforward calculation you take the voltage across the capacitor you multiply that by the amount of capacitance you take half of that and that's equal to the energy in joules so let's just run some numbers here if we take a thousand microfarad cap and I charge that to 25 volts that equates to 0.3125 joules of energy available. For a 2200 microfarad 
at 25 volts. That's 0 0.6875 joules. If I did it for a 22,000 microfarad at 25 volts, that's going to be 6.875 joules. So these aren't big numbers here, you can see what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, so I've got these capacitors, just aluminum electrolytics. And I've got a power supply sitting here that's set at 25 volts. So let's just charge up this as a thousand microfarad here, 35 volt cap. So I just charge that up. I'm going to discharge it into this plate. That's it. So that equates to 0.3 joules. Now the initial testing that I did with the meters, that's all the energy I had available. That's it. So that's not going to cause a meter to blow up, explode, catch fire. If you think that that's going to create a hazardous condition or somehow that that proves if a meter is safe or not, you need to understand electricity a little better. <laughs> I mean, let's try it with a bigger capacitor. So this capacitor is 2200 microfarad. Again, 35 volts. Charge him up. That's it. So again, that's 0.68 joules. That's it. Most of my testing was done with about that much energy. I destroyed a lot of meters with that kind of energy. This cap here, you can see 22,000 microfarad. Charge him up. Let's discharge him through the plate. There you go. So that is 6.8 joules that you just saw. Let's do it again. There you go, 6.8 joules. So that amount of energy that we just stored into this is close to what I ran the meters at at the final. So why you would think that that's going to cause a meter to explode or catch fire or get into some hazardous condition or how you think that that much energy is going to prove if a meter is safe or not, I don't understand. It. This is a ceramic capacitor. This is rated at 3300 picofarads. It's a 6,000 volt part. So if we charge this thing up to 6,000 volts, this is going to generate about 0 0.05 joules. That's it. That's the majority of what's going into the boxes is the capacitors that I'm using for the storage. So when we start talking about doing a quick discharge like this in the microsecond ranges, all of the capacitors will have a DVDT rating on them. And that's going to define how fast we can discharge them. And if we exceed that, we can damage the capacitors. In the initial generator, I used the capacitors I had available, and I exceeded the manufacturer's limit by quite a bit, and I started cracking them. You know, so that stuff's going to happen. The new generator, I addressed that. So some of you are probably thinking, okay, so if I've got a thousand mic cap, and if he's telling me that that's putting out enough energy to kill my meter, why isn't he just taking this little cap and discharging across it? Well, again, we said this is a 25 volt part, and most of those meters are going to be designed to handle 25 volts. So discharging a cap like this into the meter isn't going to do anything. We need to get the voltage up high enough to where we actually can cause some of the parts inside to maybe break down. So that's what the voltage is doing for me. So there's two ways we can do this, right? Again, it's one half CV squared. We can increase the voltage to get more energy or we'll increase the capacitance. So you can imagine here, I don't have to necessarily just keep this voltage constant. I can change the full width half height here. So if this voltage, if, if a meter was only rated for say one KV, well, if I took this to two KV and I just held it there and I just keep increasing the pulse width, eventually the meter would probably fail. 
So what I've done in the past is I kept that full width half height very constant and I increased the voltage. Okay? But I could have gone this way with it as well. What I was trying to do is find how robust the meters were. There isn't really a way to do that that I'm aware of, a standard way to do that. So I chose the IEC standard, kept that waveform roughly the same shape, and just increased the amplitude. But I limit the amount of energy. So if you look at a waveform generator like that, they're typically a combo generator is what's called. And so it's rated for a certain open circuit voltage and a short circuit current. What I'm doing is I'm using the open circuit voltage to define the waveform and I limit the amount of energy available. Some of the testing I've done, I showed this uh, gas grill starter. So again, very high voltage, very low energy. You know, I can take this and hook this up directly across this LED. See, you don't even see that LED light. There's not enough energy in this. And people were concerned that this is going to cause the meters to fail. And I basically said, if this is causing your meter to fail, you got a pretty shitty meter. Because this isn't enough energy that I would expect would ever damage a meter. So high voltage alone isn't going to do it. We need some high voltage with a fair amount of energy behind it. So why not just test it with a standard generator? Well, those generators are not made to determine how robust meters are against each other. What we really want is something where we can finally adjust these waveforms and slowly step them up and see which meters fail as we continue to increase the power. What those IEC standard generators are used for is to determine if your product is going to be CE rated or not. So there's predefined waveforms by shape and by the voltage. So we can program the generator to give us a certain voltage, but it's not as finely tunable as what we're probably going to need to try to benchmark meters like what I've been doing. So hopefully that clears up some of the comments that I see. You know, if you're educated and you realize how much energy we're really talking about here, you're going to realize that that's not enough to really cause the kind of damage that people are looking for. If we wanted to just put, you know, a thousand joules into a meter and explode them all, we're never going to figure out which ones are more robust than other ones. Another thing people had commented about was my uh, Tektronix scope probes and how unsafe that was to use those. And I had actually started out testing with just these little homemade probes. You know, why not? You see how much energy it is? These probes are very well suited for this kind of thing. So again, we'll take our 1000 mic capacitor and we'll charge it up to our 25 volts. And now let's discharge that into our small LED here, just a cheap OLED. And let's just see what happens. Wow, I don't know if you saw that or not. Let's just try that again. So charge it up and that's it, that little blip. So, one hit of this was not enough to take out this LED, yet I had some meters fail with that kind of energy. <laughs> okay, so here's the new generator. Go ahead and turn them on. So, let me just show you some of the features. These are the test cables coming off the back of the meter. I'm going to hook up our little 25 watt bulb. So, remember before we had that... Uh, when I had this hooked up before, it drew about 300 milliamps. So I'm just going to enable the voltage. And you can see it's putting out about 250 volts now, 270. And now I'm going to hook up our light bulb. And you see how it just flashed and it shut down. Let me just redo that. Okay. So the box is actually monitoring the current. If the current exceeds a certain threshold, the box is going to turn off the output. So if I just uh, reconnect the bulb here, and I'm just going to turn it on, you can see it turns right back off. So that current limit is now built into the box, and I can program that to whatever I want. And that's a safety feature where if the meter starts to have some big problem, like a dead short, I can actually disable power pretty fast with this box. So this is an LED and it's just connected with a 1k ohm resistor and 
and you can see maybe it's got a very small amount of light through it right now and that's because there's a little bit of leakage current off of this generator so it actually puts out about four volts so what I'm going to do here is turn on our transient generator And I don't know if you can see that, maybe if I turn off the light. Let's just try that. And that little bit of flash there. That's our pulse coming out of the generator. So you can see I can put out very low voltage, very low energy. It's probably at 4 volts the leakage is going to be too much to actually test the LED directly we can give it a try so we'll just hook our LED straight across the leads here and I don't know if you can see this here it is kind of lit up right now and I'm going to turn on the generator there you go <laughs> so the 1k resistor went a long ways at least to save the LED you can see it counting down that's the last transient you can also abort this during the middle of the run so if I re-enabled it I hit the button again that'll stop our test and also turn off the power splice here this is a small uh, 12 volt automotive light Let's just keep the voltage where it's currently set at and we'll hook up this little light bulb. You can see it just kind of glows here. And this is with our 25 watt bulb. See, it doesn't even glow. So let's go back to our 1K resistor here with our diode. You can see it actually kind of flickers now. Let's go ahead and increase it a little further. nothing really exciting yet let's go up a little bit higher oh <laughs> if you can see this here but the resistor now is starting to fail if you look right at the resistor if you saw that if you look uh, right here near my finger this is roughly where the resistor is like right about here I'll just do that again. It's just a very small flash coming off that resistor. So let's get stupid with it here. We'll take it up about 50% higher. Ooh. <laughs> it's interesting as the LED is actually surviving this. It's our little 1K ohm resistor that's having the problem. But the LED you can see is still flashing just fine. So let's try that again with our little light bulb here. <laughs> Much brighter. <laughs> so we need to go to our bigger test bulb.
So let's see here. A little bit of light now. So let's uh, turn it up a little farther. You see the charge is like 2.4, 2.9, 3.1, 2.9. The meter's quite slow, I only update that meter like once a second. <laughs> Fortunately, I think we just lost our filament. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can see this here. It's arcing at the very tip of the bulb. generators proven to be more uh, reliable than the light bulbs a friend of mine give me some of these this is a GE fluorescent light bulb starter Let's see inside we got a bulb some kind of gas discharge tube The reason it shuts that bulb off is the software actually disables the bulb after it's done the transient and that's in case if something does arc over inside of the meter I don't want to sustain a plasma so I actually extinguish the 220 volt supply if it were on and hopefully will quench out any kind of a plasma and then I re-enable the supply. Of course, what would the video be if we didn't uh, blow the crap out of this old fluke meter here? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. To replay, let's turn off some lights here. That's a fair amount of energy. Wow, that was nice. Look at this here. <laughs> Actually blew the top right off of this cap. Let's just try that again. <laughs> Probably see some excitement down there. Okay, it's coming. Something else cut loose that time. <laughs> oh, another cap. This one, like, right down here. Just blew the top off of it. <laughs> yeah, let's see here if we can... Uh, yeah. You notice this thing uh, kicks off the power once it's done. So, yeah, there's no uh, worry about this thing misfiring. <laughs> yeah, like right here, you can see we just lost this cap here. <laughs> so, yeah, this generator will put out quite a bit of power. I'm not too concerned that uh, meters are going to survive this. So, yep, yeah, looking forward to it.